It was December 28, 1981, and America's first test tube baby was born in Norfolk. Birth announcements come in many styles, but few arrive splashed across every newspaper. What started out as a first and very controversial scientific experiment has turned into a very normal American life. <laughs> Elizabeth Jordan Carr is now in 10th grade. The once celebrated baby is about to turn sweet 16. <laughs> is that I, I want to drive. <laughs> That's all I want to do right now is drive uh, so I don't have to have mom and dad carting me around. At the football game, the teen talk is nonstop about clothes. Hey, it has long sleeves, <laughs> but it's short. But it's, but it's short, though. That's the only problem. About friends. I don't see her. Oh, oh there she is. I see her. Ah! Some friends know of Elizabeth's unique status. Others don't. <laughs> they don't really take into account any of this whole big thing it doesn't really affect them. Elizabeth says it doesn't really affect her either. I had no say. I didn't do anything special. It was my parents. If anyone deserves recognition, it should be the doctors and my parents. The cars live in Westminster, Massachusetts, a small town in the north central part of the state, a long way from Norfolk, where 16 years ago, doctors Howard and Georgiana Jones we're starting an infertility clinic at the Eastern Virginia Medical School. My doctor at that time said, well, I don't know anything about this. I just went to uh, a seminar on it in Williamsburg, and I heard about this in vitro technique. The technique was in vitro fertilization. Back then, Judy and Roger Carr didn't know much about it, but they knew one thing. We knew we wanted to have children. But they couldn't. Judy had had several tubal pregnancies. On the third one, she came very close to losing her life. Uh, so in a very, very real sense, I think she was putting her life on the line again. So she was the real pioneer in my mind, and uh, I loved her more for it. Science and motherhood met in the Norfolk Laboratory. Judy's eggs and Roger's sperm were united, in a Petri dish, actually, not a test tube. They let a PBS documentary record it all. But we also felt an obligation to go public and let the, the thousands and tens of thousands of couples uh, know that this was viable, uh, that it was not tampering with God, that it resulted in perfectly normal children. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mom, Mom, look. Mom, Mom. Now America's first test tube baby is all grown up. I can't do this. I'm going to totally, I'm going to totally yeah, some of that knows that. <laughs> the international media is long gone replaced by a parental press corps, documenting today's Kodak moments. In 16 years, Elizabeth's taste in music has changed from lullabies to rock and roll. But her parents' hopes and dreams for her remain the same. I think what we've hoped for her all along, that she's had um, a normal, healthy, um, development along the way and we're just very proud of her so, the way she is. Catherine Barrett, 13 News, Westminster, Massachusetts.